Hi, welcome to episode number 12. I'm John French and we're going to see what else is cracking on this motorhome. Looks like springs hit. It's beautiful outside. Check this out. Fine sunny March day. So this is what we did here. And this is the three phase disconnect we installed, painted it white of course so everything matched. And I have installed a three phase 100 amp breaker in here. The power will come in through this hole here from the alternator, three phases going up and feed the top of the disconnect. There we go. So you see those terminals, terminal A, B and C. The three phases will come in to each of those terminals. When the switch is thrown, these guys here, the circuit will close and power will be transferred to these bottom three terminals of the disconnect. And from those bottom three terminals, the electricity will flow down onto the top of this breaker. So we've still got line A, line B, line C, or phase A, phase B, phase C. And then the power, when this switch is thrown, will go down to these three phases, which feed the reactor, which is located near the floor. And here at the front disconnect, I've installed three fuses, inline fuses, before it actually goes to the switch. So if anything happens, hopefully when these guys will blow, if it doesn't blow out the breaker, you just got to be prepared and safe. This box here has the reactor in it. Uh, it's a three phase reactor and the way this works is the electricity comes in here, the 40 volts comes in there from the alternator, it goes through this big coil and then comes out here, this one here, and this goes down to the variable frequency drive. Same on each terminal here. The power comes in from the alternator there goes out to the variable frequency drive after continuing through these coils. And what these coils do, they will reduce harmonic distortion in the line and it will cut out noise. So what a great piece of equipment. Once the reactor is all wired up and grounded, we put an inspection cover here. So, you can, so we can see what's going on there and I can fire my heat sensor through there make sure the temperatures are alright when the unit is running. Yeah, look at that. Made a plastic um, inspection cover for it. It's a good idea to put a label on here to let people know about what we're looking at. And I also put warning labels on too. Danger! High voltage! And then this red sign says three phase 480 volt reactor all right even the cupboard where the variable frequency drive is and everything now has a high voltage label on it just to warn people and this says three phase 480 volt alternator then Of course we don't want the 460 of volts from the alternator going into the chassis otherwise we could get severely shocked. So what these guys are, ground fault detecting lights. I'm putting these and making a circuit with these here. Just put them in a box here. Same with that one. That This one's going to go on the dashboard and there will also be a a button to push there, a momentary switch there, and there will be a momentary switch there. 
and I will explain how this happens and how this is going to be good. Here is a simple circuit showing the ground fault light box with blue dotted lines on it and this is the alternator and the way these guys are connected together is the alternator has three phases coming out of it which also just means three lines of electricity this phase A, phase B and phase C between each of these lines or between each of these phases there is 460 volts potential the way this box interacts with these lines of electricity is you take line, line number A, phase A, connected through a one amp fuse to one side of the LED lamp. Same with phase B, goes through a one amp fuse and connects to one side of the LED, same with phase C. On the other side of the LED lamps, there is a wire that joins all three of them together. And from that junction there, we also have a wire going to a normally closed momentary switch. All that means is that's a switch with a spring on it, so it's not, the power can normally go through it. When you press it down on a spring, it opens the circuit up. Then when you release the pressure, the circuit will close, the spring will draw the contacts together again. So and from the other side of the normally closed momentary switch, we have a wire going down and joined onto the chassis of the electric motorhome, which is this green line here. These lights will all burn with equal intensity when the alternator is turning. The electricity would come down line B, for example, go through the light bulb and then return back through phase C and phase A. Same as on phase A, you come along, this light bulb burns, the electricity comes back through phase B and also phase A. The electricity will not go down onto the chassis of the motorhome because there's no potential and there's no way for the electricity to get back to the alternator which is what it is trying to ultimately do so when this system is working normally these lights will burn with the same intensity if however there is a fault for example on phase C the electricity would come along go down onto the motorhome chassis go along the chassis and then up through this wire through the switch and then it would go back through phase B and phase A which will cause these guys to burn brighter there is no electricity flowing through here when there is a ground fault happening because there is no potential difference between these two points that's why this does not go on therefore when this box is in situation on the van on the electric motorhome and you're driving along and this light goes out you know there's a fault on phase C or if this light goes out this would tell you that phase A is somehow grounding to the chassis and it would need to be addressed because that would be lethal potentially or you could get definitely electrocuted or burned the reason why we have this normally closed momentary switch in the circuit is is just a test to make sure that these lights all work and are not burned out for example if there was a slight ground fault there if you press that momentary switch and disconnected that circuit these guys would burn with equal intensity but if that's a short there and you let that go this light will go out and these guys will burn brighter <coughs> and these are all out of phase with each other this is a representation of the electricity that comes from the alternator the electricity starts at zero it rises to about 500 volts then comes back to zero 
and goes negative 500 volts and comes back to zero. But as you can see, even though it goes up to 500 volts, the usable electricity is about 460 volts. And your voltmeter is designed to measure that particular distance, not this distance. This is a timeline. The wavelength of a sine wave is the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the same wave further down in time. It goes up goes down and comes back up so from there to there is actually the wavelength frequency which you may see written on the side of a motor or on the side of a, an alternator is how many times this goes up and down per second now as you can see phase A phase B and phase C coming out of the alternator. By the time phase A gets up to 460 volts, not up to 500, by the time it gets up to 460 volts, phase B is at zero. So you get a potential of 460 volts. Also, when phase B gets up to about 460 volts, phase C is at zero. So you get a potential of 460 volts, and that just keeps happening. Then, when phase A gets to 460 volts negative, phase B is zero again. So you get 460 volts potential between those two conductors. So this is how this all works. If these three phases all went up all at the same time and down at the same time there would be no potential and you would get no voltage that's why there is a time lag between each phase as the alternator turns in the magnetic field and the ground fault light box covers are just back in from the painting booth next door just hooked up the shore power to the main panel in here, got 120 volts and turned on the LED lighting. It seems like it's working pretty good, but it's still partially light outside. But yes, gives nice definition. I like the colour, goes well with the uh, the blues actually. It seems to have like a, a blue hue, possibly due to the frame I painted blue around it.